Hey Mr. Bill Poker Peeps, welcome to the vlog. Much better, much better attitude and mood this week than I was last time. Uh, I was just burnt out before. I think that uh, not playing as much and just concentrating on other stuff is helping. The other thing that I was discouraged from all the negativity of the last few times and this week really helped because oh my gosh the outpouring of support and positivity toward my vlog and me was overwhelming. Again I can't thank you guys uh, more for just how awesome you guys are. Hey the Mr. Bill meetup game is a go. Watch this entire vlog. There are details at the end of this vlog on how you can sign up. So I really couldn't think of a theme for this vlog because it's just, <laughs> it's gonna be a rehash of many, many sessions that from the World Series to Cleveland to Choctaw to Windstar. So I guess I chose to say, hey, it's gonna be many sessions and many hands. So I hope you guys enjoy it. So one of the tournaments I look forward to more than any tournament that I have in a long time was playing in the tag team at the World Series of Poker. Billy and I had planned on this for a long time, for probably a couple of years. As soon as he was 21, we were going to play in the tag team. So we did play in the tag team, and here's a little bit of that. All right, World Series Poker 2019. This is the tag team event. This is the one we've been talking about doing for a while. So tag team, father son team. This would be great, wouldn't it, Billy? Let's take this one down. Let's do it here. All right, after an hour and a half of me playing, I left Billy with 20,700. We started with 20,000, so way to chip up that. <laughs> All right, while well, I was gone, our team got a table change to green 215. There's Billy. He said that uh, he went down a little bit. I think we're, I'm gonna, he's going to hand off to me at about 15,000. That uh, blinds at 200, 300, I believe. All right, here we go. I didn't realize the tag team had so many good teams in it. I guess the pros like to kind of compete against each other and put together some really good teams. Uh, I know the Solve for Y team was there and just a whole bunch of really, really good teams. Ooh, we were on the swap because I stunk. Billy gave me 14,900. I ran that down to 6,500. I had pocket jacks that day. And then I made a bad block. One bad block, Billy. Not don't bluff. The 6500. Just get it, get it in there. We got 19 bigs. We had a great experience. We just simply get, didn't get any cards, and and we didn't run well. We didn't play as well as we want. But we'll be back next year because we did have a lot of fun. All right, it's the Mr. Bill Poker Gang. We're all going to Bellagio to play cash games. So we all busted out of the tag team because it sucks. Bellagio. Here we go. Let's go, Bellagio. So this next one happened at the Bellagio, playing in a 2-5 game. I was not having a good day. I was going to leave. Uh, I decided, okay, I'll play for a little bit, a few more rounds. Anyhow, I was on the butt with nine hearts, ten hearts. I had $560. My buddy Brent, playing at the same table, was under the gun. He limped. The P1 limped. Uh, middle position two made it 20. The cutoff me, small blind, and under the gun all called. So the flop with 107 in the pot was Queen of Diamonds, Seven of Clubs, Two of Spades, and it checks around. The turn with 257 in the pot was the Jack of Diamonds, now I'm open-ended. Middle position two makes a 75, and I'm the only player that made the call. The river, Seven of Hearts. Not very good for me, but he leads out for 135. I decided, you know what, I don't think he can handle the heat. I'm gonna raise this up. I raise it up to 300. He tanks for a long time and he folds. And I say to the table, anybody want to see a bluff? <laughs> I showed the nine, 10 of hearts and that guy was so mad. In fact, he tilted the next two or three hands. He just kept shoving all in because he was mad. Anyhow, sometimes you got to take a chance. Uh, I was a little bit tilty myself because I wasn't winning. And I thought, I'm just going to win this pot. And I did. So during the second week of the World Series Poker, I found myself at Planet Hollywood. We played in a number of their Goliath Series events because uh, they were a little bit less expensive and still had some pretty good payouts. Anyhow, found myself in one of the smaller events. It was a nightly 130, and I found myself at the final table. So the biggest hand of this tournament came when there was eight players left. Uh, I was one of the chip leaders, uh, the three of us that were kind of big stacked. So blinds were at 5,000, 10,000. I was in middle position and woke up to pocket aces. Yes, 215,000, one of the chip leaders. I raised it up to 25,000. 
the hijack behind me shoves all in for 140,000. Woohoo! And not only that, the button shoves all in for 180,000. Of course, I make the call. And when you're running good, you're running good. I turn over my pocket aces. They both turn over king queen offsuit. <laughs> the board ran out uh, five eight jack two king, and I had dang near a triple up. I went to over 500,000 chips. Now I was an overwhelming chip leader with only six left. So with four left, we took our last break. I show the picture of the uh, payouts here. They were talking about a chop with four, but I didn't like what they were offering, so I turned it down. We knocked out another player, down to three, and now we started to talk about a chop between us three. I had 440000 They each had 360000 We agreed on a chop. I took $1,900 since I had more chips. They took like seventeen twenty-five a piece. So, not bad. Um, blinds were way up there, and there was only like 15 big blinds for me, so it's kind of ended up being... Uh, fold or shove there, so it was not a bad chop at all. So after I won the Planet Hollywood tournament, I went downstairs. Dane was playing in a 1-3 game. I decided oh, I'll have a beer and, and play with him. And like the second hand, I ended up getting Queen Jack. Uh, I think Dane raised it up to 12. I made the call. Two other players make the call. And we get a flop of Queen Deuce Deuce. That's pretty darn good. And Dane bets, and I call, and the other guy folds, and another guy calls. Well, the turn is another queen. And Dane bets, I've got a queen. I call, and now this other player calls. And I'm thinking, woohoo! Dane's not betting that unless he has a queen. I know I have a queen. This other guy's in big trouble. So the river comes a seven, and Dane checks. Okay, he doesn't have a queen. All right, so I make a bet. The player behind me shoves all in. Dane then folds. Okay, he didn't have a queen, obviously. And I announce, okay, let's chop it up. And I call with my queen. No, sir. Pocket deuces for the other guy. And for the second time in one month in Las Vegas, I lost with top boat to quads. <laughs> oh my goodness. So the cash games, again, I've already told you, I won in seven out of eight sessions. That's very, very good. Unfortunately, didn't make up for the losses in the tournaments. And honestly, the cash game sessions could have been so much better if I had just run decent. Here's an example. That Bellagio, playing a 2-5 game, I had like 650. Uh, ended up getting pocket aces. I bet, guy three bets me, I four bet. He shoves all in for like 500. Of course, I make the call. He has pocket kings, king on the flop, and I end up losing $500 there. Again, cash game did, ended up doing well, one in seven out of eight sessions, but it could have been so much better. table has gotten dramatically tougher. So just real quickly about some Caesars tournaments. Caesars has $150 tournaments four times a day and they are usually pretty darn soft. Usually anywhere from 60 to 90 players and they only take about three to three and a half hours to play. It's pretty fast structure. So I played in two of these, a one o'clock and a five o'clock and I was by far the chip leader both times after the second break. Eight reds to Little Caesars, 150 at 1 p.m. Started with 15,000, and I have 32,000 at first break. So, pretty good start. So the first one, <laughs> I changed tables, and blinds are getting up. They're pretty good. They're 1,000, 2,000. And I have maybe 65,000 chips. I'm by far the chip leader at the table. And... It goes seven limpers to me on the button, and I have ace jack of clubs. I make it 22,000. <laughs> the original limper shoves all in, he had about 16,000. And then the guy behind him shoves all in, he had more than 22,000, he had 34,000. Everybody else folds, of course I'm not gonna 
fold now when I put in 22,000, he has 34,000. So I make the call thinking, uh-oh, this is not good. The under the gun had a shovelable hand. He had king queen suited, no problem. <laughs> the guy that shoved behind him, three four of hearts. You know what's gonna happen, right? I don't even have to tell you. <laughs> My stack got decimated because the three four of hearts wins the pot on a four on the river. It's just, oh my gosh, it's just poker is horrible. Is poker horrible or what? <laughs> How can somebody call to a $22,000 raise, an initial limp jam, and he calls with three four of hearts? Oh my gosh, of course you know what I say. If people pay their money, they can play it any way they want, but it's just infuriating sometimes, isn't it? Goodness. So, I didn't win that tournament. I didn't even cash on that tournament. The second one, I was again absolutely a chip leader by a large margin second break, and then it was race, 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 lose, lose, lose. I ended up bubbling and not making the money on that one either. Oh my gosh. <laughs> But again, the Caesars tournaments, very, very soft. I think if I lived there and I played there, I could almost make a living just playing those things. Uh, let's get ready to rumble! All right, these next couple of hands happened at the Windstar Casino playing in the 2-5 game. I have $550 in the big blind with King of Hearts, Nine of Hearts. The P1 makes it 15, the cutoff calls, the small blind calls, and I make the call. The flop with 60 in the pot comes King of Diamonds, Queen of Diamonds, Jack of Hearts. It checks around to the cutoff who makes it 25 and I make the call. The turn with 110 in the pot is the Jack of Diamonds. It goes check, check. Now I've played against this player many, many times. He either has a really big hand or he's got absolutely nothing. So we're gonna see here in a minute. <laughs> so the river with 110 in the pot is the five of clubs. I check. He makes it 45, small enough that it certainly could be bluffy. So I decide to raise it up, or I raise it up to 125. He thinks for a minute and shoves all in for 600. <laughs> Oops. So of course I fold. He shoved all in because they had nine ten of diamonds for a straight flush. Here's a little poker tip for you guys. If you bluff into a straight flush, you're normally going to lose. All right, same win star session, $600 I have. I'm in middle position two with king of clubs, nine of clubs. There's two limpers. I decide to call, the hijack makes it 20. Big buying calls, the two limpers call, and I call. So the flop with 102 in the pot is king of hearts, jack of diamonds, nine of hearts. I flop top and bottom, not too bad. It goes check, check, check to me. I make it 70, the big blind calls, and it looked like he wanted to raise. Oh, I didn't like that. So the turn with 242 in the pot is the five of clubs and he leads out for a hundred. Ugh. Oh my goodness. It's, I'm probably too good to fold here, but I, I think that I'm beat. Anyhow, I make the call. The river with 442 in the pot is the queen of clubs. He bets 225. My top and bottom pair shrunk up like crazy with that card. I make the fold. He shows pocket nine so he had flopped a set so things are not really going very well in this session uh i think i'm in for about seven eight hundred dollars and i'm in middle position two with four spades five of spades so every once in a while i will raise with this kind of hand just so i can get credibility when i have my big hands and maybe you hit something good uh, i make it 20 the button calls Fifty-five, and we both call. The flop with 170 of the pot is jack of spades, ten of diamonds, five of clubs. I flop bottom pair. And that guy shoves all in for 180. I tank. You know, this guy has been just wanting to get it in there. I think he has lots of ace kings, so I make the call and the other player folds. The board runs out, six of hearts, eight of diamonds, and he announces, I missed, shows ace king, I show my four five, and the table went, oh! <laughs> it was kind of funny, I like it when that kind of thing happens, but that guy either has me crushed or it is an ace king. 
So sometimes you can just get a good read on players from the way that they talk or, or their actions where they just seem like they want to get it all in there, whether it's a good hand or not. Of course, it was a good pre-flop hand. But remember, especially you, Rob Jenkins, that ace-king is just ace-king. It's just a drawing hand. Don't play them like aces, my friend. <laughs> So at our Wednesday Night Poker League, we play one or two hands of PLO or PLOA 8 per round. And here was a really interesting one. We're playing PLO 8, so a split pot game. I have Ace of Diamonds, 2 of Diamonds, 6 of Spades, 7 of Spades. Plenty good enough to play uh, pre-flop. I think that there was five of us at $10, so $50 in the pot. So the flop came, King of Clubs, Eight of Spades, Three of Spades. I have the Ace, Deuce of Diamonds, I got, can potentially get half the low, so somebody bets $30, and then there's three of us that call. The turn is the Ten of Spades, I don't like this card. I now can't win both sides. And somebody bets pot, the other guy calls. I can't do that, I'm gonna quarter myself. I can't win both sides, so I fold. The river, though, was the Nine of Spades. <laughs> Would have given me a straight flush. And you know what? I still would have lost the big side because one of the guys had Jack Queen of Spades. It would have been straight flush over straight flush. I actually would have won half the pot with the low, but there's no way you can make that call because you're going to get quartered so many times. But interesting hand, straight flush over straight flush. At the casino, it would have paid a bunch of money. So Vicky and I were in Cleveland this week. We had a family reunion this past weekend. Billy flew in on Sunday night, got in at midnight. And then he and I went off to the Jack Casino to play a few hours of cards. So I'm at a 1-3 table. Uh, I hadn't played very many hands, if any hands, the first two or three orbits. I was in seat five and it became very obvious to me that seats seven and eight were the best players. So when seat seven stacked off seat nine and seat nine left, I got a seat change. So now I'm on the left of those guys. And the second orbit after I made the change, uh, both seven and eight folded. I was in middle position one with four or five of diamonds. <laughs> but the rest of the table is not very tough, so hey, I'm gonna take a shot at it. So I raised it to $12, and the hijack, the cutoff, and the big blind all called. The flop with 49 in the pot came nine of diamonds, six of clubs, two of clubs, just a gutter ball for me. The big blind donks into me for $18. Usually this is not very strong. I raised it up to 45. The other two guys fold. The big blind shows ace deuce and folds. I told you the rest of the table was not very good. But the table did get tougher. Billy showed up. He was in seat three. Four and five got stacked off and were replaced by good players. What was a pretty easy table except for two guys now turned into a pretty tough table. But I'm in middle position two with $340. I have king of spades, nine of hearts. It goes limp, limp to me. I call the cutoff and the button and the big blind all call. So it's a limped pot. The flop with $19 in the pot come ace of diamonds, king of diamonds, nine of spades. I flop uh, second and third pair. Uh, it checks to me, I make it 11. The button and the big blind call. The turn, 52 in the pot, comes the queen of hearts. It checks to me, I make it 25 and both players call. Uh oh. But the river with 127 in the pot is the king of clubs, giving me a full house. It checks to me, I bet pretty darn small, only $40, but both players fold. Billy then left the table, went to a much easier table. He ended up winning, I don't know, $250 for the night, so that was good. It was late, our table broke, I went to one more table. I didn't play any hands for about three orbits. There were some really big stacks at this table. Uh, my gut's telling me, just leave. You only got 15 minutes left anyways. But I did not listen to the gut. And almost always, if you don't listen to your gut, it is not a good thing. So I'm in the plus one with $615. I'm up $315. I have ace of spades, 10 of spades. The under the gun, who's the big stack, he has 2,000. He leads out for 10. I call, and then a very loose, aggressive player in the small blind who had $1,000 makes it 36. Um, the end of the gun makes the call. I think about it, and I make the call. The flop with 111 in the pot is the ace of hearts, seven of diamonds, four of clubs, and it checks around. Hmm. The turn is the jack of hearts. Uh, the small blind leads out for 50. The other guy folds. I think I'm too strong here to fold right away, so I make the call. 
The River with $212 in the pot is another seven. He leads out for 150. I pretty much snap call. This guy has shown so many bluffs, but not this time. He had Ace King, uh, and so I lost 236 of the $300 that I was up. Not too good. So I picked up and left. Very, very small profit. Billy had a good sized profit, but hey, a win's a win at least. But I should have learned my lesson. Man, listen to your God. How many times do I have to say that? Jeez. All right, guys, the Mr. Bill meetup game is going to be Saturday, August 17th at Will Hoyt's. It's a bar in Grapevine, Texas. We have a private room upstairs. We can meet about 5.30 for a little get together and say hello. Cards will be at six o'clock. It'll be a one three game, $300 maximum, or 75% of the big stack. There'll be one hand of either Omaha, Omaha eight per round. There will be food and soft drinks provided. There will be a cash bar. Uh, you must sign up to play. If you're not signed up, you can't play. And there's a maximum of 36 because we can only fit four tables in that room and we're also gonna have dealers. So sign up at the link or it'll be in the description down below. And I'm happy to see who comes out for the game where it's gonna be a good time. I know I say this every week, but you guys are just awesome. I got such great positive feedback and support last week. It makes me feel so much better. So <laughs> thank you so much. And as always, you guys have a fantastic week. I hope to see some of you at my meetup game next Saturday. And in the meantime, you have a blessed week and I'll see you next time. Bye.